How to use the camera and imaging on Best Calculator IoT Edition is the topic of this advanced version of programming for Best Calculator. Best Calculator is an ordinary calculator, has advanced features, you can format things, there's a memory, there's a ton of solvers, but it also includes a bunch of programming abilities. That's what we're going to talk about today, and in particular, there's a new sensor camera available. That is, you can access the front and real camera of your device if it has one. You can display it on the screen, you can do mapping, uh, and you can uh, analyze the image, the, the, the bits that come out. Now, there's a bunch of examples inside the EX sensor camera location microphone and more package. There's a bunch of, of programs in here. The A first program is the very first program channel analysis and showing several different channel analysis programs. I am going to be using my copy of those programs. I'm going to use those copies because I switched it all to rear camera and because this way I can show you the code that goes along the app. Let me run camera first program. Now what this is going to do is it's going to make a, a, a sensor camera using the rear camera. It's going to display it on the screen. Let's watch that go. So we say run, and there's our image. I have a very old programming manual for how to do Windows programming uh, using version 1 and a couple of Christmas ornaments that are nice, bright, shiny red. Let's see how that code actually works. Let's stop this app. When I stop it, by the way, you'll see the camera vanishes. That's because the camera vanishes. The preview window vanishes when the app st application stops, when the program stops. The basic steps to make this run is we first clear the screen and print out a little thing saying it's a simple camera program. We need to make an image. That's what's going to where the camera would be displayed to. Images are part of the graphics system. So step one is we make this graphics item, the G, screen.graphics, with an X and a Y position, 50-50, and then a height and a width, height at 400, width 600. We then build an image inside that graphics. Now the graphics can contain a whole bunch of stuff. In this case, we're only going to put one thing into it, this image. Once we have the image, then we can start thinking about hooking it to the camera. We make a camera by saying sensor.camera rear. you got to pick which camera you want to use. Sensor.camera rear. That picks the rear camera. That makes this camera object. We tell it to start, and we tell it to display its image as that image we made earlier. We then say forever, so the program keeps on running and running and running. Now let's watch that go again, and you can see how the different parts work together. We cleared the screen to blue. We printed that little line. Up and down here is, of course, our image, is the graphics area. Inside that is an image, and inside the image is this camera. Now, it looks very still, but in fact, it's a real camera. We're displaying what's called the preview image. Now, the preview image, when we place it onto an image, the preview image from a webcam, it's very high resolution. You can see it's nice and high resolution, and it's very fast. There's no squirreliness, there's no frames dropped, it's a very fast efficient thing. That's because of all the optimizations the operating system has for preview images. We're not going to get that with everything. Let me show you what I mean. Just displaying an image isn't super interesting. One of the other interesting things you can do with it, however, one of the features this has available, is when you have the camera, you can analyze the image. When you analyze the image, you can pull out the different data, the red, green, and blue, when you pull out the different data, red, green, and blue, we can then change it. And you change it with a mapping. So here we have our program. It's, it looks exactly the same as the old one, right? We print the screen to blue. We set up our camera. We set up our graphics object. We set up our image, just like the, as before. Only now we have an analysis image as well. The analysis image, we have the camera. We start the camera. We set the camera image. But now we're going to add in the analysis. This is the new part. We grab an analysis object. We set its image. But then we also say, by the way, there's a red, the green, and the blue. We're going to do something a little bit different. That's not just a regular red, green, and blue. We're not just going to accept a low value of red and display a low value of red, and a high value of blue and a high value of blue. Let me show you what that actually does. So here on the bottom, we have our high resolution image from being just as before. On the top, though, it's posterized. We don't get the smooth gradations of red and green and blue. Instead, 
there's only a couple different versions of red. There's only a couple different versions of blue. There's only a couple different versions of green. And they combine to form this version. Or in the case of the little apple, we can see it's got red. And here there's the green. But instead of a lot of different versions of green, it's been posterized. There's only a couple versions of green that we see. It's also, as you can see, a little bit pokier in terms of displaying. It's got a little bit of lag on it. And in addition, it is much, much lower resolution. That's because analyzing images takes time and effort. We can't analyze everything. Let me show you how that works. So in the analysis, when we make this analyze, this is where we decide how big the analysis object is going to be. We're going to decide what part of the image we're going to analyze. We actually normally only analyze the middle third. I mean, one third exact center. But we ignore the left and right thirds and the top and bottom thirds. So it's actually one ninth. Technically, that means it has a radius. It's a square area, but we still call it a radius. A uh, radius of one sixth of the overall image centered at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Analysis add point. Red, we say, if you see a zero up until, sorry, if you see a zero, that zero there, then display a zero. If you see an 85, display a zero. Now we will interpolate between that. So anything between 0 to 85, including 85, will all be set to 0, even though they had some values on this. Once we get to 86, however, we're going to jump up, and now 86 becomes 128, all the way up until 170, which is also 128. So we have a very, very flat response here, right? All the low values of red, they all get set to 0. All the medium values of red, they get set to 128. And all the high values of red, from 171, to 255, they get set to 255. So you can see that on the add point here, the red channel, we see, send in a series of tuples. There's two values, an input value and an output value. So we see an input value and output value here, an input and output value there, input and output there, input and output there, input and output here, and input and output there. For each input and output, that's one new point that we'll be using for our interpolation. We then have three different points, red, green, and blue, for the red, green, and blue. The default mapping, of course, is 0, 0, so as 0 becomes 0, and then 255, 255, and that makes a nice linear ramp. Each input value goes into the output value. We then, by the way, I didn't mention this before, but this forever means we're going to run forever until we actually stop the program. So once again, let's run this program and see how it runs. The bottom, once again, is our very nice high resolution, low lag image. And at the top is our posterized image. So here we have our ball. And we can see we only see a couple versions of red in it, a couple versions of green on the very side. And we look at our apple once again. There's our apple and there's the, the uh, uh, leaf on it. Once again, there's only a couple versions of green that we can see on this because there's only a couple versions of green available to us because we're posterizing. Now, there is one other thing that we get to do. We've now seen how to make the camera. We've seen how to get the preview image. We've seen how to create a new version of the preview image, the analysis image, the analyzed image, where we can modify the values. We can pick which part of the preview, and we can pick the size of the preview, and we can pick uh, the, the amount of uh, posterization, the amount of rasterization, how to modify the input values. But there's something else we get to do as well. You can set a callback on the analysis object. And that's this subject of our, you can see I have a couple different apps, by the way, here, different programs that will do channel analysis to remove the blue channel or only show the red channel. This is using an analysis callback. Now, when we do an analysis callback, this is the same program as before. We clear the screen and we print it. By the way, if you do this, don't do this, you won't actually see that output screen. If you want to see the output screen, you've actually got to write to it at some point. We make our graphics just like before. We set up our camera just like before. We set up our analysis just like before. Only now, we're not going to change the analysis image. But we will set in this analysis callback. This callback will be called every time we get a new frame in. And it will be called, and here's our little function here, analysis callback. It's called by name with a red, 
green and blue value. These are double values. These are values between 0 and 255, but they can be a little bit, they can be like 4.3 and 128.7. And those are the colors, the average color in that area. After the mapping, by the way. So if you remove everything but red, then you only get red. Your green and blue will be zeros. And we're going to print it. And, and not only are we going to show it and print it, we're going to escape it as a color. This will make it look like an HTML color. Let's show you what that looks like. So here we have, once again, our nice high-resolution display. At the top up here, we get our nice analysis image with our blue cover from our, our book. I should tip up a little to Windows programming book. But up here, you can see that we're actually grabbing parts of the image and we are analyzing. We're showing you what that color is. Let's take our red apple. When we have our red apple and we're covering most of the analysis screen, what we should see is a ton of red, and we do a B4, that's pretty red. But the green and the blue are much lower. They're like 20 something and 30 something. Red and green are, are much, much smaller. That's because it's a red apple. If I rotate this to show the green, see a little green on it? When I rotate this to show the green leaf, the red will drop sharply. And now we'll have almost nothing but green. Red, let's get a little bit closer so it's all green. So now the red is pretty low, but the green is up much higher. Because it's a red, green, and blue thing. Now, I said I'd show three programs, and I did, but I'm actually going to show one more program because this program is the one that's actually really, that I find the most useful. HTML color from a rear camera. This does exactly what the other program did, but we have our high resolution display here. Here, in the upper left, we have our lower resolution. There's my hand in it now. We have a middle version. And here on the right, over here, this is another analysis. You can put several analyses on the same camera. In this case, I've got the analysis to almost no part at all of the original image. It's right smack in the center. It's a tiny little dot, and I'm using it to grab a color. But that color that you create with the that HTML with the string escape for, for color, you can actually give that into our background here and say, hey, background, be that color. And that's why the background here keeps changing color. Here, I'll bring up the apple. You can see why I've got several analyses in here, by the way, because otherwise, how would you know where this central point was pointing at? It's so small, you can't see it. But this medium resolution one lets you see where it is. So here's our Christmas ornament. And all of a sudden, we're turning red. Blue from the book again. Let's do the apple. Here's our apple. Now we're in the red part of it. Hey, it's all red. We rotate to show some green. That's the green that the apple has. By the way, you can see just how high resolution the camera here is. That's actually not such a bad image for being all zoomed in like that. You actually see some of the detail of that leaf, which is kind of surprising. Until you realize just how high resolution these modern web cameras are. So this is really cool because then you get to see what the HTML color is while also seeing a larger view of that same color. It's actually really kind of a cool program to have just as near toolkit of fun programs that you can attach onto the keyboard. Let's take a look at the changes I had to make in order to make that run. So for this app, I did the same thing as all the other ones. Clear screen, print an image, I make a camera. Here, it's the rear camera, I make my graph, GERF. I often use GERF when I'm doing images because G is for green when you're doing image processing. We make an image and that's our main camera image. That's at the bottom, 2020 to 42120. 2020. 2020 is at the bottom left of the graphics area. And then the right, remember this is not a width, it's an actual point. The X point is 420 over here, and then the Y goes up to 170, which is about up to there. And then we start and we set our image. Step two is to make the analysis image. There's our cam. And we zoom it in super climb. This A dot radius 0 0.01, 2% of the overall image is used to make that analysis image. 
the center is right smack in the center. The analysis height and width. This is how many image pixels we're going to look at when we do that analysis. The default is 64 because really you don't need that many pixels normally. In this case, I decided to pick a couple more because I, I could. Once we get our analysis, so here's our analysis, cam.analysis. We set a radius. We uh, into the center a c x c y that sets where from the preview image we're going to actually look at to pull out data. This is for the scaling, how much stuff we're going to do. Then we say, oh by the way, pop this one right onto here, x two thirty y one ninety. That'll be that's the upper right hand corner. And we're going to add this partial zoom. So we have this partial. We make another image. Because remember, it's a graph. The graphics item can contain a number of things. You can make circles, you can make lines, you can make rectangles, you can make all sorts of stuff, including images. You can have as many of these images as you like. Boom, 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 boom. That's the X of 20, which is over on the left, a Y in the middle-ish, and then the X in the middle and Y near the top. We do analysis, and we say, by the way, there's your image. And then lastly, we have our output HTML color, red, green, blue. We get our color. We print it out here. But then take a look. This GRF, global GRF, that's our graphics. That's the original graphics that we had, the original graphics that we put our images into. We say, by the way, GRF background, that should be that color. That's how we set the graphics background color. Right here, just say graph background, this color. We set it every time, and bam, it gets set. Let's once again see this running. There's our high resolution image. It looks really nice. Low lag. This middle one here lets us figure out where it is we're looking at. And then right in smack in the middle of that is going to be where our zoomed in, extra zoomed in, extra analyzed version is. And that extra analyzed version, that's going to be what the background here is set to. So you can see if you want something nice and gray, you get this nice glittery gray value. If you want to know what skin tone looks like, that's my skin tone. If you want to see what like my nice black camera looks like, hey, it's black. That's not actually such a surprise. And of course, if you want to see this nice Windows programming book and you say, hey, I wonder what that color of that book is. I want to match that garish orange 80s streak. That's the color of the garish orange 80s streak. All right, so what you've seen now is how to Use the two cameras on board the on, on your laptop, the front and the rear camera. You've seen how given a camera you can display its preview image. You've seen how given an, an image you can analyze it, you can map it, you can get different values out of it, and you've seen how you can pull data out of that and use that in order to change the color of things on your screen. This should give you a lot of fun new toys when you deal and we write programs. For best calculator. As always, let me know the kind of additions you'd like to see in best calculator. Maybe they'll go into the next future edition. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.